The U.S. Department of Justice, and particularly the FBI, are apparently full of government, quote, trial lawyers that don't know a damn thing about trying cases and can't even answer questions under oath. Andrew McCabe was one of those lawyers who was actually the deputy director of the FBI for a period of time before being fired. And he played a central part in the whole um, injustice of what happened to General Flynn. And he was questioned on Tuesday by Senator Ted Cruz before the Judiciary Committee, and he got absolutely destroyed. The top brass at the FBI intervened to keep the investigation open. Were you the one who made the decision to keep the investigation open? I don't remember making that decision, but I certainly supported keeping the case open. I don't remember being the person that made that phone call, but I think that it was the, the right move to continue investigating once we had uh, uncovered the, investiga- the information that we found. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What'd you say? That's where Cruz should have said, wait a minute, I didn't say anything about a phone call. Let's talk about that. So despite the fact that the career investigators concluded that there was no basis and no derogatory information and recommended closing it, you made the decision, or, and you, or at least you agreed with the decision to keep the investigation open. On, on, on what basis? Well, I don't know that I, I don't recall that the investigators determined there was no basis to continue. My recollection from the conversations we were having about the, the Flint case. The memo is time, a memo to close the investigation because it, it could not find any, quote, derogatory information about Flynn, and he was, quote, no longer a viable candidate for investigation. That's not ambiguous, is it? No, that's not the same as what you said before. And I, of course, don't have that memo in front of me, but... Wait a minute, that is what he said before. And this is one of the most difficult things about being a trial lawyer is controlling witnesses. And this guy needs to be controlled. It's very difficult because he's not there in person, but it is the same thing. So what, what he said before was despite the fact that the career investigators concluded that there was no basis and no derogatory information and recommended closing it, you made or agreed with, with the decision to keep the investigation open and on what basis? And then McCabe said, well, I don't recall that the investigators concluded that there was no basis. And so Cruz said, well, wait a minute, there's a memo right here that says, quote, they could not find any derogatory information about Flynn and that he was no longer a viable candidate for investigation, which means that there was no basis for to keep the investigation open, which is what he said. And then McCabe says, well, that's not the same thing as what you said before. Yes, it is exactly the same thing. And he should have he should have stayed on that witness and made him answer that question. But then McCabe changes the topic and says, well, and of course, I don't have that memo in front of me. Yeah, of course you don't. Of course you don't. And that's the difficulty of questioning witnesses over the internet. It's very difficult because you can't, you can't uh, actually give them something to look at. Whereas, you know, in court, usually, if you're there in person, you could, you know, ask the judge, your honor, may I approach the witness or can the bailiff approach the witness and, and provide this document? And that's how you impeach witnesses in person. Say, well, you know, you have it now. Take all the time you want to look it over. And when you're ready, let me know. Then I'll question you on it. Our feeling at that time was that we had found very little, uh, if any, incriminating evidence about General Flynn until, of course, we found potentially very incriminating evidence about him. Are you referring to the, the Logan Act theory? No, sir. I'm referring to the fact that we uncovered that General Flynn was having the sort of direct contact with the government of Russia that we were looking for in all of the first four cases of crossfire hurricane. Did you you, did you support using the Logan Act as a basis to go after General Flynn? The Logan Act is a 1799 statute passed by Congress to stop this Quaker guy named Logan from negotiating personally and directly himself with the French government. It was passed by the same same Congress that passed the Notorious Alien and Sedition Acts, and it has never been used to prosecute any American citizen since it was passed in 1799. So, as Cruz is pointing out, it's an absolute farce that the FBI has some legitimate investigation into General Flynn for having a phone call 
with a foreign leader, which is exactly what Biden presumptuously is doing at this very moment and bragging about. Using the Logan Act as a basis to go after General Flynn? The Logan Act was not used as a basis to go after General Flynn. Uh, we opened the case. You're aware of the White House Flynn. meeting where where the notes show that Vice President Biden at the time directly suggested using the Logan Act to go after General Flynn. I, I'm not aware of that. You're not aware of that. Well, th 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 those are notes from your colleagues. I don't mean to interrupt. But uh, I Senator, do. I, I, Senator I, I can say what uh, the reasons that I agreed with and approved opening the case and that was because we thought that General Flynn might be having inappropriate contacts with Russia. That's why we opened the case. It, 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 inappropriate. What... So, so the only basis, this is a decorated three-star general. The, the, the only basis that was put forward for what I think was a bogus political persecution and prosecution was an alleged violation of the Logan Act, which has never been used to prosecute anybody in the history of the Department of Justice. True? No, I don't believe that's true. I think if name, you name one at, person that's ever been prosecuted under the Logan Act. You no, know, I was referring to why we opened the case against General Flynn. Uh, I'm not aware of prosecutions of the Logan Act. As I just explained, there have been no prosecutions of anybody for the Logan Act since it was enacted in 1799. Either he's dumb or he's falsely and fraudulently playing dumb as a witness because he can't answer the question truthfully because he's culpable. I may, I think for those who are listening, we're talking about a conversation between General Flynn and the Russian ambassador after the election while he's the national security advisor in waiting. Is that correct, Senator Cruz? We are. He's the incoming national security advisor. And, and Mr. McCabe, yesterday on MSNBC, Ben Rhodes, the former deputy national security advisor to President Obama, said that foreign leaders are already having conversations with Joe Biden, quote, talking about the agenda they're going to pursue January 20th. Mr. McCabe, based on that testimony, do you believe Joe Biden is violating the Logan Act? I'm not aware of Ben Rhodes' statements or or, or take it on faith. The, he said what I re read. Assuming he's that quote is accurate, and it's a verbatim quote. Is that a violation of the Logan Act under any plausible theory? I am not prepared to take your statement on faith, and I am also not prepared to conduct legal analysis. All right, of you're a lawyer. Logan. Have you ever answered a hypothetical in court? If it is correct that I am accurately quoting it, something the Department of Justice frequently did wrong in, in, in this investigation, if that is what Ben Rhodes said, if Joe Biden is talking with foreign leaders right now, does it violate the Logan Act, yes or no? I'm not going to opine on a hypothetical question about what the Biden okay. campaign he is talking with foreign leaders and it doesn't violate the Logan Act because the Logan Act is unconstitutional, which is why it's never been used to prosecute anyone. You authorized using it to go after General Flynn as part of a political persecution. I can give you the answer. Hell no, Joe Biden is not violating the Logan Act. The reason you won't say it is because that was your flimsy political basis to go after a decorated war hero because you disagreed with politically with President Trump. This is a great example of when you have a basically a useless witness who will not answer questions truthfully, who's being evasive to the point of being non-responsive, the best way to handle that is to usually just take control of what is essentially cross-examination, where the question is what matters. It doesn't matter what his answer says because his, his answer has no credibility. It's worthless. He's not answering anything anyways. So you take control and you make your point in the question. There's no right answer to this question. There's nothing he can say. Sir, none of that is correct. R which part? Pick, pick any aspect. We didn't investigate General Flynn because we were concerned that he might violate the Logan Act. We were concerned it that General Flynn... your testimony, Flynn... the Logan Act was not a predicate for the FBI and, and, and DOJ investigation of General Flynn? Really? There were no discussions of the Logan Act. The best there of my were recollection no discussions of the Logan Act at the FBI or DOJ. That is your testimony under penalty of perjury before this committee. Senator, and I warn you, there is not... abundant evidence that there were.
Senator, if you're not going to let me finish my answer, I'm not going to be able to accurately answer your question. Please go ahead. What is your testimony? Is your testimony, you just said there was no discussion of the Logan Act. Is that, does that remain your testimony? No, Senator. That's where you cut off my testimony. Please continue. I would, I would like to finish Please my answer. Please continue. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, when we initiated the case against General Flynn, it was not initiated for or as a result of any discussion of Mr. the McCabe, Logan Act. You're being non-responsive to the question. I didn't ask about the initiation. The Logan Act was a late. Can you believe that this guy was running the FBI? Really a pathetic performance. It reminds me of when I worked at the Department of Justice in D.C. and we had to deal with people like this and they would have name tags on the outside of their office that said trial lawyer, but they'd never tried a case in their life. And if they did, they wouldn't know how to do it. They just, they live in this world, the swamp, where they get to exert their power over the underlings. And it reminds me of um, a female colleague of mine when we had just started there. She got called into the Big Shot's office and got just, just, I mean, she tore her to pieces and she was crying afterwards because, you know why? She didn't properly acknowledge this woman in the elevator. That's the kind of stuff that these people do. That's the world that they live in. Could you imagine working for that guy? I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine working for that guy? No way. Okay. According to the Washington Times, April 18th, 2018, Mr. McCabe insisted he told his boss that, that he had authorized disclosure about the Clinton investigation, but Mr. Comey has denied this claim. Uh, and Mr. McCabe told investigators that M Mr. Comey knew he had authorized disclosure and agreed it was a good idea. Is that accurate? Is that your testimony to this committee? That is my recollection. So... You're aware that your testimony is 180 degrees opposite Mr. Comey's sworn testimony to this committee in which he insisted he has never authorized anybody to leak to the press. What Cruz is doing here is a common tactic that's used in courtrooms, and that is just to remind the witness that they're under oath and there's a penalty for perjury. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Every time, it at least reminds everybody listening that you don't think the person's telling the truth. Sometimes it's a bluff. I can remember using this in a trial once where I had held a recorder up in my hand. And, and I said, are you sure? Are you, are you positive that there was nobody recording that telephone conversation? And got the person to, to reverse course. Of course, had they called my bluff, I just would have said, uh, um, I would have moved on to the next question because there was nothing on the recorder. I, I don't, I'm not going to say what Director Comey said or didn't say to you. That would, however, your characterization of a leak is not accurate. So if you haven't gathered this already, this is the swamp creature putts who ruined the life of a decorated three-star general, General Flynn, and threatened to ruin the life of his son, I believe, and that's how they got him to plead guilty, not to violating the unconstitutional and never used Logan Act, but for allegedly vi uh, lying to the FBI investigators sent there by Comey and McCabe. Perhaps more importantly, the really scary thing is if these swamp creature FBI guys can do this to the incoming national security advisor for a president-elect, imagine what they can do to you if they want to. Imagine what they've already done.